Sorry about the delay, the computers are not quite working, but my name is Heather Van Ruler and I'm going to be doing a speech about a little bit of the history of Wacan. And so these are just a couple pictures of Wacan, and it's Wacan then and now. The first white settlers in the McKee Township were Patrick Keenan and Richard Cassidy. They settled on McKee Ridge on a, in October 1848. Mr. Keenan built the first log house ever erected in McKee or Union Prairie Townships. In August 1849, Crosser Whaley came in and made a claim on Section 32. He then returned to Wisconsin to get his family and brought them here in September of that year. During the next six weeks, he built the second house of the township, which was a general stopping for newcomers. Mr. Whaley then died in May 1866. January 24, 1853, the legislature of Iowa appointed three commissioners, Clement C. Coffin, John S. Lewis, and Dennis A. Mahoney, to relocate the county seat of Elmakee County. They came up with a few locations, but the absence of water made them unsuitable. Father Shuddock, then owning some grounds bubbling with springs, donated 40 acres to be used for the county seat. And then at that time, there was a log cabin, 10 feet by 14 feet, which belonged to Mr. Pilcher. It was purchased and moved to the new town site. This was the first courthouse ever built in the town, but it was so lacking in size that it was later moved to Spring Avenue and used as a blacksmith shop. The county seat was moved to Lansing in 1961. The picture on the top right is the old county courthouse. It is now the current museum and was built in 1861. The commissioners requested John Haney to christen the spot. He had been having been a trader among the Indians and having a good friend with, in the chief of the Winnebago tribe. It was John Wacon. He gave it his name and it has been called Wacon since. In the Wacon Standard of March 12, 1868, we find John Wacon's son was in town. He was physically a fine specimen of the red men, standing five feet, 11 inches in his moccasins, slim as straight in it as an arrow with broad shoulders and a deep chest. This is a picture of downtown Wacon, and it was taken in 1865 from the bell tower of the old courthouse looking southwest. This is an early view of Wacon's Main Street, looking east in the 1890s. Note the dirt streets, wooden sidewalks, and the horse and buggy traffic. This is Wacon City Hall, built in 1902. And in the spring of 1911, some of the public-spirited ladies of Wacon discussed the question of forming an organization for civic improvement. The first and immediately visible results were chiefly in the cleaning update for the streets and alleys, and they also had an interest in better care of the residents' lots. But the ladies had plans for other kinds of improvement, among them the establishing of a public library. For a location, they secured a small room in the south part of the city hall building, and the large room on the east side for a reading room. On January 13, 1912, a collection of 149 books and some magazines were open to the public. Mr. W.C. Wilkinson was appointed the librarian. This is looking east down Main Street. The big building on the left is the Grand Hotel and the streets are still unsurfaced. This is the Grand Hotel in 1910 located at what is now the corner of West Main and 1st Street Northwest. It is now the Chamber Office. This is Alma Key Street, looking north in the 1860s. The large stone building is the old Barber Building. The outside stairs led to Barber's Hall or Opera House. Ernest Dillenberg's leather shop occupied the lower level for several years and Walt Hausman later served as the butcher shop poipeteer. 
This is Almakey Street in the 1890s looking south. The Dillenburg building that housed a hardware store and a bank is on the left side of the picture. This building is now occupied by Lashensky's Insurance. This is Almakey Street in the 1890s looking north. Now the corner building that you see there is Impro. This is the first Presbyterian church building built in 1902. The right is the in original interior. Note the pump and pipe organ. The first Presbyterian church was organized in 1857 under Reverend J.C. Armstrong, who was sent by Home Board of Missions and began working in the autumn of 1856. James Maxwell, J.B. Plank, John Raymond, and R.C. Armstrong were chosen and ordained as first ruling elders. Worship was conducted in a public schoolhouse until the fall of 1858, when its present church building, corner of Main and High Streets, was completed and occupied. This was the first church building in Wakan, and the completion of so large and fine a structure was quite an event in those days. It was improved from time to time, and in 1878 has since has been heated by a basement furnace. In 1882, the membership was about 110, and there was also a large Sunday school. This is Spring Avenue in 1880. The building that the arrow points to burned and was replaced by the log building and the picture to the right of it. This is Spring and Avenue in 1870, and the arrow is pointing to the old Harvard building, just so you can kind of see what it looked like. This is Spring Avenue in 1909, and once again, the arrow is pointing to the old Hale building. This is Spring Avenue in 1947, where we have developed diagonal parking, and the lower arrow is pointing to the old Hale building, and the top arrow is pointing to the building that burned and was replaced by the lot building that we see there today. This is Spring Avenue in 2012. You can kind of see where the building used to be. It was replaced by the lot building, and then just the difference is that it's so overcome. This was the Almy Key Hotel in 1912, and it was located in the parking lot behind the old Hale building. This is Main Street facing west in 1905. This is Main Street facing west in 1980, and the arrow is pointing to the old Hale building again. This is an early view of the Carter and Herman Drugstore in Dayton and Dayton Law Offices. It was located west of the Hale Department Store. Ewing Real Estate is the building that now <laughs> occupies that building. This is the old Opera House in 1884. The Wacom State Bank parking lot is now in that location. Before the old Opera House, there was a large frame building occupied by a marble shop that was put up by Shuttock and Woodcock in 1859. This is the Heiser Brothers wagons, carriages, and farm machinery in 1880. This is where the rusted nail is now located. This is Olson and Peterson shoeing and plow work in 1880. This is where Casper and DeBoer Plumbing is located now. This is the Wacom Standard and Harness Shop in 1880, which burned down and was replaced with the log building that is pictured to the right. The first newspaper was published in, that, pu that was published in Wacom was the Wacom Journal, which was established in the spring of 1857 by Frank Belfoy, who ran it for about nine months when it passed in the hands of Frank Pease. Pease, upon assuming control, changed the title of the paper to the Elma Key Herald, the first being issued February 26, 1858. It was a six-column follic, issued Fridays, and democratic in politics. The Herald was discontinued in May 1859. In August 1859, the paper was revived under the name of the Wacom Transcript. 
In later years, the then name changed once again to the Wacom Standard. This is F.H. Malumbi Furniture, an undertaking in 1890. It was then Super Furniture Mart, then Gambles, and it's now where Howard's Home Furnishings is. <laughs> this corner building were the first brick stores in town. They were erected by the Robinson Brothers and Adam and Hale on the corner of Main and Alma Key Streets in 1869. It was first Graham's, then Hale's, Stilo's, Tierney's, then Evanson's. This is Martin Brothers Furniture and Carpet in 1960, and it is now the Steel Cow. And then on the night of September 13, 1870, a fire originated in M.G. Belden & Sons Blacksmith Shop, where Martin's Furniture Store was, destroying all on the northeast corner of Main and Elm Key Streets, compromising the blacksmith and wagon shops, the flower and feed store, and the boot and shoe store. This is Reagan's Pharmacy in 1957, which now holds Impro. This is a 1907 picture of the building where Cunningham Hardware is now located. And the picture on the top right is Cunningham Hardware today. This is a picture of Sears and Jennifer's, where the Tesla's building and Ewing Real Estate are located now. The big picture is of the construction of the current U.S. Post Office on July 29, 1939. Before the post office was being constructed, this spot held a drugstore, the first in Wakan. It was later moved downtown to what is now, to what was the Verizon building. The bottom right picture is the post office in 1940. And the top left picture was the post office in 1880 but it was located at a different location. The post office was the first established at Wakan in the early fall of 1853 with Scott Shudek as postmaster. He was succeeded by L.T. Woodcock and he by W. Beale. This is the plow and machine shop in 1880. Wakan State Bank is now located there. In May 1871, Lewis Hersey opened the first permanent bank in Wakan with J.B. Turk in connection with their mercantile business in the stone block on the east side of El McKee Street. In January 1879, G.L.W. Stoddard and C. Granger united with Mr. Hersey in establishing the Wakan Bank. On April 29, 1892, the business was incorporated under the name of Wakan State Bank. On February 1st, 1912, it moved to its current location on Main Street. <coughs> These are just a few bits and pieces of information I have come across when studying the history of Wakan. I hope you enjoyed it, and thanks to Judy and all the staff and you guys for watching.